Black Ops 6 is going to be coming out soon, and I'm not excited for it whatsoever. Because BO6 and what is seemingly is going to be the future of zombies is just going to be Cold War 2.0. Why this is bad is because the core of Cold War is not zombies. And in order to see why, we're going to go over all the main mechanics, the design, and the main gameplay loop of Cold War 1.0. Why I don't like this new system is not because you get less points out of it, it's because the old system was a game. It was a game about calculating and adapting. Here's how the old system worked. You got 50 points for a body kill, 100 points for headshots, and 130 for knifing, and on top of that you get 10 points every time you hit a zombie. If you knew how this old system worked, you could use it to your advantage in many unique ways. When starting out in the game, you would put a couple bullets in the zombies, then you would knife it. Then on the next round, you put a couple more into them, then knife them. But eventually, you're gonna run out of ammo, so you're gonna have to switch up that weapon. However, that weapon, depending on how much damage it does, you either shoot the body, or if you are smart, you could put a couple bullets into him, and then on the final hit, get a headshot, or you could flip and knife him. You could flip and line them up and hit the zombies through another zombies, saving bullets and getting extra points in the process. This new system was never about getting points. It was about changing your tactic and adapting to what you had and how much ammo you had and how many zombies there were and where to hit them. It's about changing the gameplay. What is the best way to get points in Cold War? and BO6, which is confirmed to have the same exact system. Headshots. That's it. That's all there is to it. There's no taking account how much damage you're doing, how much ammo you have, or even how much health the zombie had. You just got headshots, and that's it. This system literally feels like some higher up in Treyarch looked at it and went, this system's too complicated for players to understand of it. You should get rid of it. And so, what could the devs do? They just got rid of it. They had to dumb it down because some flipping Activision higher up don't understand game and flipping stripped it out. Having a low perk limit is bad, but having unlimited is worse because of two reasons. One, one of the most fun things about the old school zombies was deciding which perks you want and which ones you didn't. Sure, for the most part, people just went with the main four, but depending on what you were doing sometimes, you might change it up change out some perks for other ones. An example of this is that one time I went for round 100 and since damage and reloading it was so much of a factor in it, I went ahead and decided to flip and change out speed hold and double tap for stamina and widow's wine to run faster and I'd get a little bit of defense. But now with this no limit, you just buy all of them all the time with no variation, no experimenting, no combinations. Every single game. Number two, just having all the perks all the time is the meta of the game. The devs then have to balance the game and the perks around having them at the same time, even furthering the need to have all the perks at the same time. If you ever wondered why the maps in Cold War were so big and why the zombies moved so fast, is because the game was designed around having stamina. And because the maps were bigger, the zombies had to move faster to compensate for it. And since the zombies moved faster and the maps were bigger, stamina was even more of a requirement.
rarities in ammo crates sound good on paper, but suck in execution. Kind of like communism. The game is pretty much just telling you to never change your weapon ever, because why would I trade in my high rarity weapon when salvage is so precious and I can just buy ammo for the gun I'm using whenever I want? It's like the game de-incentivizes you to change your weapons, or even grab a spare one. Another thing that's missing from Cold War is that, oh shit, I'm out of ammo moment, and have to scramble to do something about it in here. Like, there, there's none of that. I don't know about any y'all out there, but I never run out of ammo on my weapons, and I don't even use the ammo crates. They just give you so much reserve ammo. It's ridiculous. What I want to talk about is not the personality of the maps, but about the design philosophy of the maps. And the design philosophy of Cold War is this. If room is big, put something in the middle. If room extra big, put two. I am not kidding. That is like 90% of all the rooms in Cold War. Okay, here we are in Firebase Z. And would you look at this? It's a big open room with something in the middle. Just look, look at how much I can just flip and run around this thing. Like, really nothing to be worried about. Plus, I can mantle on that. Okay, now, now look at this room. This room's flipping gigantic. And look, there's flipping thing in the middle. There are a couple of other things that been scattered about. But honestly, they don't really get in the way. And you can just flip and run around this sucker all day. Look at the size of this flipping room. There's no debris anywhere. There's nothing to get caught on. Oh, there is just that one car. What about this room? Oh my god, look at how big this room is too. You can get kinda get caught on the things in here, but not really. Not that hard. Oh, what do you know? It's a big room with something in the middle. These sort of big uh holdout areas are actually not too bad. The only thing I can really complain about is just how you can just vault over pretty much everything in this room, so pretty much it still is just one big open room. And like, these maps just feel so empty because there's like nothing scattered about or even anything to take a note of when you walk in to any of these rooms. Also, another problem is that like most of this room are always just these square or rectangle or circle things just connected to one another. Like, look, Pretty squared off open place, which leads to another square-ish kind of place, which is also connected to a square-ish kind of place. Then there are like these rooms, which are very circular. Yeah, honestly, you can you can really see it in this area. It's just a square big room with something in the middle connected to another square room connected to another square room. Connected to another square room. Connected to a square big room with something in the middle. Oh, two things in the middle. Look at that. I see that this room right here is actually pretty good. Maybe could use a little bit of debris, but still kind of claustrophobic. I probably should have mentioned earlier why having such an open design for zombies is bad. Because the thing is, it, BO1 would have these awkward and claustrophobic design of the room which would have debris scattered all about pretty much forcing you to think on how to traverse the room it would also be interesting to look at and sometimes the design of these rooms would be so dangerous that you would actively try to avoid the rooms the best you can or you would think twice before you entered it like you had to prepare yourself to enter a room in cold war if there was a room that had all the zombies on the map in it i would still dive head first in that motherfucker because that's how confident i would be 
to get in and out of that room safely. Okay, I chosen Ascension because I think Ascension is probably the closest thing to Firebase Z. Like they're both Russian outposts that have like launch pads. This has like the, I forgot what it's called, but it's basically the same thing. But yeah, if you look at this room, granted it is pretty big, but it still is kind of claustrophobic. And it also has some like hazards in it, like these pipes. Right here, they make like a little choke point. So you can't just flip and zoom around the whole thing in a circle. But like weaving out of all the debris and stuff. And this room just doesn't feel empty. It's filled like, it feels like it's filled with stuff in it. I mean like, look up here. I've went to the second floor and this place is kind of small. And Cold War probably be like about 10% bigger. And like, hardly that would be there. But these barrels wouldn't, those crates wouldn't be... It would just be like that right there if this was Cold War. And this is just the spawn room. Let's, let's take a look outside. See, th see, this place is open, but it's not like completely square. And there's this little corner here, which I don't, I don't think anybody has ever been trapped there before, but it's there. Just like, look at this place. So it still has a little bit of room, but you still feel like you can get trapped if you ain't paying attention. Now this is a big room, which does have something in the middle, but at least in this, it's still a little bit claustrophobic, and zombies do come from over there, from there, and right there, so you can still get trapped if you ain't paying too close of attention to it. And, I mean, look at this room. This room is square, but it has a whole bunch of debris in it, which makes it, which helps breaks up that and squareness of the room and you can get trapped on these little ledges right here so that corner is completely inaccessible and inaccessible in, in and in set you know, you know the word i'm talking about which still has kind of this little choke point right here in the room literally just right here it's pretty squared off but there's this stuff right here which helps makes the room a bit smaller i mean just look at this i've i literally played this map a couple days ago and i died in this room because i flipping just dove head first into it look at how flipping tight this room is you gotta weave in and out of all these little crevices and places you can get trapped and you can't just flip and barrel straight into it i find it so funny that they introduced this new mechanic of vaulting and like this freedom to move around the map however you please however they also decided to get rid of all the debris which would have been perfect for this mechanic if anything they should have added more debris into it in order to use that mechanic more <laughs> i think the reason why people think that these maps aren't zombies isn't because it's ripped from the multiplayer it's because the maps were designed to be so open like a multiplayer map with no debris no nothing you just sprint right in the room and just don't think twice about it mystery box has been there since the beginning and it it's so sad to see that the box has basically just become absolutely useless and you might be thinking so what was the big deal the reason why is because the box is such a integral part to the cod zombies loop and so much so that the box used to flip and determine the fate of an entire match. The fate of the entire match was dependent on the mercy of that goddamn box. Due to the random nature of the box, every game of zombies was different, depending on whether or not the box was nice to you or not, which really, really helped keep every game fresh and exciting every time you play. Was it an easy and cheap gameplay mechanic? Yes. But it worked. And it worked so 
well. There are five main reasons why the box has become useless. And those five reasons are problems even within the, themselves. And I'm also going to try to get through this section really quick just so we can flip and get to the final answer. One, you have nothing to spare because points are so tight, salvage is so tight, and why you don't want to spend those resources on the box is because if you do, it's going to be around 35 to 40 before you get all your stuff. And that is way, way too long of a time. Two, what is the point of trying to find a better weapon when you can just start out with the best weapon? The whole point of zombies is starting out weak, then slowly progressing to become a god. And with this loadout system, you, you the, the, it's just the whole thing is gone. Like, what's the point of the box even then? Three, what's the point of getting a cool LMG out of the box? And then it turns out the pistol you have in your back pocket is better just because it's a higher rarity. It just adds more risk to the box while lowering the rewards of it. Four. Speaking of weapons, there's basically no weapons in the box that you can really classify as good. Like the shotguns are good, but that's it. And you can just spawn in with those because how Cold War made its guns, they're just designed basically to all be on the same level. Hey dude, I have this fully packed LMG. Cool. I have an SMG that basically has the same mag size, does the same amount of damage, can reload even faster, and I can move like a racehorse on steroids. And on top of that, you can just buy it right off the wall, right here. Five, there are really no more any kind of special weapons. Like, take the Olympia for example, when you pack a punch it, it gets like Dragon's Breath, or when you pack a punch the AUG, it would get a Master Key Underbarrel Shotgun, or there's some weapons that have a flippin' Underbarrel Flamethrower, but they're just no longer any kind of unique weapons that are fun to use. At best, some burst weapons get a slightly longer burst, but that's about it. I want this gun. Headshot, headshot, headshot. Let's stay here until round six. Ooh, time to go. Might as well grab some stamina up while I'm here. There we go, the power's on. Dark Aether, here we come. Might as well shoot some crystals while I'm here. There we go, the Packer Punch is open. Might as well do the Coffin Dance, it's really easy to do. Oh, I'm back in the dark either. Might as well shoot some more crystals while I'm waiting. There we go. I got me some free jug and let's see what else I got. Well, I have enough now to upgrade my gun. Oh, there's the megaton. Might as well grab that key card. Oh, I have enough to upgrade my weapon again. Let's also grab the die controller because the die is always nice to have a backup weapon. I'm just going to go ahead and grab quick revive while I'm here. Ooh, nice, the die. Always nice to have. Oh, it's time to get my fourth perk. Okay, now I'm pretty set up. Let's go ahead and focus on my upgrades and get into the rest of the perks. You know what? I'm done. Let's exfil. That was a good game. I want this gun. Headshot, headshot, headshot. Round six. Time to go. Damn up while I'm here. There we go, the power's on. Dark Aether, might as well shoot some crystals while I'm here. Packer Punch is open. Might as well do the Coffin Dance or some more crystals while I'm waiting. There we go, I got me some free jug. Well, I have enough now to upgrade my gun. Might as well grab that key card. Oh, I have enough to upgrade my weapon again. Die controller, because the die is always nice to have a backup weapon. Quick revive while I'm here. Ooh, nice, the die. Fourth perk. Let's go ahead and focus on my upgrades and get into the rest of the perks. I'm done. Let's exfil. 
That was a good game. Headshot, headshot, headshot. Time to go. Damn it up. I'm done. This game is so mind-numbingly fucking boring and brain dead and boring and there's no variation in the gameplay. There's no decision making. There's no dangers to be fucking scared of. There's just so many. There have been so many times where I've been playing this game and I've actually not been playing the game. I've been watching it just because of how boring and brain dead this game is to play and how easy it is it you you don't even have to think you just play because you spend 90 percent of this game just waiting for something to happen instead of trying to make something happen when trying to upgrade your gun you aren't trying to get points to upgrade your gun you're waiting until you get enough headshots to upgrade your gun you aren't waiting to see what perks you want or need. You just wait until you get enough points to get the perks. You're not trying to survive. You're just waiting to die. Because in this game, you get so much health. And there's so much room in these maps that you don't have to even be scared of getting trapped. Because if you do, you just have so much health. And you can slip out of it easily, or you can just vault over something. There is no surviving. There's just waiting until the game just screws you over. That's it. Do you guys want to see how flippin' easy this game is? This is probably gonna be hard to look at, but just just watch just watch. This is it. That's all there is to it. Super flippin' easy. And just look at the mini-map and how crammed together they are. Oh. There goes one zombie. Because in this game, if zombies are get too packed together, the Autry start dying off. Like in Minecraft with the entity cramming. There goes another one. And also, in Black Ops 6... You're going to be able to sprint sideways and just flip in, just run in circles and shoot into the center of these guys. You're just going to be able to sprint sideways and do this and just never die. Now, you won't be able to do that until round 100 because then they're going to add in super sprinters, but super sprinters is just such a bullshit mechanic. They're just not fair. How about we go over the old loop of this game, shall we? As you can see here, I'm putting a couple bullets into zombies and knifing them. Would you look here? A couple of them all lined up, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that to my advantage and try to get as many points as I can while knifing them at the same time. And look, now since it's a different round, the zombie's health is higher, so I have to put more bullets into them which will make it so I get even more money. And now I'm flipping calculating for the zombie's health and how much damage I'm doing. Uh oh, I got an insta kill. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and knife him just so I'm not just standing here waiting for the insta kill to go away because it's not gonna make a huge difference. And look at that, look how flipping scared I am of these zombies. Cause I know these zombies will mess me up. Okay, these zombies can mess me up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a weapon here since my pistol is so weak. Oh, I want you to look at that. Since I changed weapon, I'm now calculating how much damage it does so I can still get the maximum point out of the zombies. From the looks of it, it looks like headshots is just gonna be the best way to go because it's gonna net me a little bit extra points while on top of saving more ammo. 
However, if I was a smarter person, what I could do is put some bullets into the zombie, then knife them on the final hit. Hmm, we should look at that, the box. You know what? Let's have a little gamble here, shall we? Yo, is that a fucking ray gun? What flipping luck did I have? This match is gonna be changed forever now. Uh oh. Looks like I messed up there. Didn't take into account how much open damage those Nova Crawlers did. Let's go ahead and see what game two does for me. As, and as you can see here, I'm buying Quick Revive right off the bat. Oh, would you look at that? I forgot to calculate my ammo because last game I actually got a max ammo during that. So now I'm freaking out and having to scavenge around for crap. <laughs> Looks like I'm just going to have to settle with this shotgun here on the wall because I got nothing else to do or access to. Okay, I got enough points from them zombies. Let's go ahead and progress forward. Oh, would you look at that? The box is here. You know what? Interesting people hit the box, so I'm gonna hit the box too. And I just got a, another pistol. But I think this one would probably do a bit more damage than just that M1911. Oh, would you look at that? It does. Now I'm testing out how much damage this pistol does. There you go. That's how you get some points. Now, I could probably go ahead and go for some more weapons, but I think I might actually save up for Jug instead. Ooh, this is getting tight, and I died. Uh-oh. Probably should have been paying more attention to my surroundings, huh? Okay, you know what? I think I need a little bit more firepower. However, I'm going to try to go for the box again, because I might get a good weapon out of it. Ooh, would you look at this? I got me an LMG. You know what? This LMG is actually pretty good, but but I run a little slow with it. But I think I might go ahead and try to go for something a bit lighter. And I got another LMG. Well, I run slow, and I could get stamina up. However, I think speed call would probably be better choice for this. I know it's a bit cliche, but hey, speed call is a nice all-rounder. Ooh, double points. Oh, and a flipping inch kill on top of that. Flippin' might as well start knifing Money City in this bitch. You know what? Having two LMGs is nice, but I would like to move a bit faster. So how about we try the box again? See if I get something a bit lighter. Do wild scorpions. I don't know how good they are, but they seem like fun with this kind of playthrough. Okay. I think you guys pretty much have gotten the picture of it how interesting it can be. And I finally figured out what the problem was with Cold War Zombies. The reason why it's not zombies is because the three main cores are not the classic three main cores. The main cores of classic are these. Adapt, Risk, and Pure Fucking Chaos. And the cores of Cold War, I tried my best to find the words for the life of me, could not find the best, but I found at least what they are adjacently. Routine, predictable, and control. This, my friends, is not COD Zombies. It is quite literally the opposite of that. And the developers don't even know it. It feels like there's nothing else on the market that can scratch the itch that Black Ops 6 Zombies gives. It's just so fun to play through that gameplay loop over and over again. Are you sure about that? It's at its core a mode that we love and we just want to continue to push it in new directions to keep it fresh and exciting. Are you sure about that? But at the same time, making sure it's delivering on all the big elements that are core to the DNA of the mode. Are you so we're creating new experiences within that. I'm not saying the mode shouldn't change or that it should always stay the same. Because if zombie hasn't changed, I don't think any of us would be playing it right now. But when you're messing with the main fundamentals of the game you should tread very lightly unless you know exactly what you are doing 
And instead of just leaving the video saying, game bad, fix please, I'm gonna go ahead and give out a few fixes that are still kind of in line with the dev's vision. Simply just give 10 points on hit to zombies, like where that would just fix everything. However, something you can do is just make it so you can only get a maximum amount of hitting points off as a zombie so let's say you hit a zombie five times it gives you 50 points but that's the cap then every time you hit the zombie after that it just doesn't give any more points maybe decrease the price of some things like maybe make the pack a punch total price like all three upgrades be a total of thirty-five thousand to forty thousand instead of it being 50. Make the perk limit something like six or eight, then you can give like two perk slots as a reward for, for doing a task like the challenge podium or like a side easter egg. And if the player completes the main easter egg, just go ahead and give them like all the perk slots. I think that would be perfect. Make the perks have their own price, not this cold war where you have more perks the more it costs because it just, it just doesn't really work as well as make them refundable iw zombies actually did that and was actually pretty good give the wonder fizz at least some kind of downside like maybe make it random or like it costs more get rid of the green and purple rarity it, they just don't need to be there like at all then also reduce the damage bonus from each rarity something maybe like zero for common 50 for rare and 100 for the flippin epic legendary reduce the maximum ammo reserve on unupgraded weapons and have like the pack a punch level increase the ammo reserve every time you level it up and make ammo crates activate after a certain round like you'd have it activate on 20 or 25 make runes about 10 to 15 times tighter and also just put down some flipping obstacles and stuff in the way Put that new vaulting and omni movement to fucking work. And also don't be afraid to make some rooms dangerous on purpose. Either get rid of weapon loadouts or make it like BO4 where there's only certain weapons that you can choose from. Or you can make it so the loadout weapon just is not upgradable. You can't upgrade its rarity or it's pack a punch. It's only just its base form. This one's kind of a little bit of a smaller one, but just don't give the field upgrades right off the start. Like maybe something you can do is like have it where you got to turn on power first and then there's a workbench or weapon locker somewhere around the map. You can even put a waypoint on it in order to get your field upgrade instead of just spawning in with it. Well, anyways, that was the rambling of a madman. I've been working a total of seven days on this and hopefully it's good. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in my next mental breakdown.